This is my current hydroponic media of choice, and you've probably never tried it. It is a highly porous, inert carbon structure that will absorb and hold moisture while still leaving space for oxygen, which makes it an ideal hydroponics growing medium. Under a microscope, the surface structure might look something like this. This is carbonized rice hull. Let's talk hydroponics. Let's look at some popular hydroponics growing media. LECA, or expanded clay aggregate, is light and porous, but is expensive and is a big course for seed starting. Rock wool, or spun volcanic rock, is cheap, but it requires thorough cleaning to reuse. Cocoa core is a renewable growing media made from coconut husk, but it retains water so well that I usually have to mix it with other media. Carbonized rice hulls, on the other hand, seem to hit that perfect balance. It retains water well, but is difficult to overwater. It is affordable, and the used media can be added to the soil as a living space for beneficial microbes. Let's dig deeper into this potentially sustainable solution. So where does rice hull come from? It is actually the protective skin or husk on the outside of a rice grain. Looking at the anatomy of a rice grain, we have the rice hull or husk protecting the outside of the grain with a secondary layer called the rice bran, inside of which you have the rice germ or embryo at the base of the endosperm. The endosperm, which is the starchy inner core, will eventually be made into white rice. The bran, which usually includes the bran and the embryo, is full of nutrients and will typically be given to livestock. So we have the hull, the bran, the germ, and the endosperm. Once the rice hull has been separated from the rest of the grain, it is typically considered an agricultural waste product, but it definitely has its uses as a good soil amendment due to its silicon content, which can help plants build up their cell walls. Now, if you take that rice hull through a process called pyrolysis, you end up with carbonized rice hull, which is a stable carbon form that is great as a hydroponic growing media. Now, pyrolysis is a process used to create biochar, by heating up organic material in the absence of oxygen. In our case, our biochar is made from rice hulls. Biochar is similar to charcoal, but is typically produced at a lower heat for a longer period of time, and it is intended to be used as a soil amendment. Now, pyrolysis is pretty good at creating clean heat energy because it produces very little smoke, which can release methane. So if we can learn to use carbonized rice hulls, which come from an agricultural waste product in our hydroponic systems, and move towards generating our own biochar, which produces clean energy and gives us a hydroponic media that can be added to the soil once we harvest our plants, this seems like a great direction to head in. Once my hydroponics output becomes an input to my organic garden, I'm moving closer towards a closed loop system, which is what Blue Thumb is all about. One caveat to all this is that based on my research, Biochar can be very alkaline, depending on what material it's made from and the heating process used to make it. Therefore, I tested my carbonized rice hulls by soaking them in water for over 24 hours. The baseline pH of my filtered water was neutral, and after soaking the carbonized rice hulls, the pH actually increased in acidity, and in fact got closer to the ideal range for hydroponics, which is generally between 5.5 and 6.5, depending on what you were growing. Now this range will be easily hit when we add our hydroponics nutrients to the solution. If you're trying to grow with biochar that is much more alkaline and you have a lot of it in your hydroponic system, then you may try pre-soaking the biochar in a more acidic solution to help balance out the pH. So far, I've used carbonized rice hulls in two inch net pots to grow everything from bok choy and basil, all the way to cucumbers, melons, and indeterminate tomatoes. While there are a few disadvantages, like it's a bit messy to work with, it seems to accept a wide variety of watering techniques. And I'm notorious for overwatering my plants and it has saved me on multiple occasions. We really hope this has inspired you to try new hydroponics media and consider the sustainability of that media. Let's keep on conserving water and grow a blue thumb.